Welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you for joining us here on the program again. I'm going to be having a conversation with Mr. Brian Cully. He's CEO of Lineage Cell Therapeutics, and he's joining us to talk about three cell therapy programs. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Brian Cully. Hi, Neil. Pleasure to be here. Thanks a bunch. Well, um, we're going to talk about three cell therapies that uh, you've developed there at uh, Lineage Cell Therapeutics. Give a little bit of uh, your background and tell us how you um, came to be at Lineage. Uh, well, sure, Neil. Though I've been at Lineage for about two years, and I came here because uh, I was tempted by the the future uh, of cell therapy. So I'm a, I'm a big believer that cell therapy is going to be enjoying explosive growth, uh, and that we're we're at the early days of that. And I really wanted to be a part of that. And and in particular, uh, what we do at Lineage is we we have the ability to manufacture specific types of cells and to transplant those cells into the body to perform functions. So your body has about 200 different types of cells that it manufactures. And uh, we can make in huge numbers certain types of those cells and then uh, administer them to you and, and give you new function and new activity. And we do that in areas such as blindness, spinal cord injury, and, uh, and helping to boost your immune system. Uh, we were going to talk about three specific cell therapies today briefly. I know 10 minutes is not a lot of time, but let's talk about um, this op region, uh, op C1, and I think VAC2. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. So op region is the name of our therapy for dry age-related macular degeneration. So this is one of the leading causes of blindness uh, in the world. And the hallmark of dry age-related macular degeneration, or dry AMD, is the death of retina cells in the eye. Uh, no one knows why this happens, but many of us, millions of us living in this country, as we age, we are losing retina cells, and they never are recreated. You lose them, and they're gone forever. So if you lose enough of these retina cells in an area that you rely on for vision, not surprisingly, your vision becomes impaired. You, you start to see uh, wavy lines and black smudges, and you, you lose your ability to, to read. You lose your central vision, and ultimately, you can go completely blind. And it only takes a few years in, in the more severe cases. So there's never been anything approved uh, by the FDA to treat dry AMD. And, uh, and that in large part is because no one knows why these cells die off. So our solution for this problem is that we have the ability to manufacture millions and millions and millions, uh, actually billions <laughs> of these mm -hmm. retina cells, and we can transplant them to the back of the eye uh, where they belong, where they're supposed to go, and they remain there. And they remain there stably for years, and they're functional and um, and that is our approach. We believe that by providing a patient with new, vigorous and healthy retina cells, that we can essentially transplant that sub organ and provide function and, and even restore vision. Now, you mentioned dry age related macular degeneration. Is there a wet AMD? Yeah, a wet AMD is the other huh. form of it. Uh, so it's a good guess. Um, but there are drugs and therapies for wet. In fact, they're, they're doing about $10 billion in sales, but there's nothing approved for dry, and yet there are eight, nine times more people who suffer from the dry form. So dry AMD is far more common. There's nothing out there approved for it. There really aren't that many companies working on it because, again, no one knows why these cells die off. It's a big mystery. Mm -hmm. So it's really difficult to come up with a tool to fix the problem if you cannot characterize the problem. So what we do, again, is just say, look, we're going to give you an entirely new cell or 100,000 to give you the exact number. We put 100,000 of these cells into the eye and uh, they seem to be very happy back there. We've never seen any cases of rejection. Uh, they last for years. And we have seen evidence of people who are able to uh, read even as many as 25 letters more on an eye chart. So that's about five lines on an eye chart. We have people who have doubled their reading speed. Uh, and we have people who have incredibly shown that the area of cell loss uh, has started to recover. And no other company has shown that. We just announced that a couple of months ago. One of our patients actually ended up uh, with a smaller area of damage than they started with. 
And so that's really exciting because nobody thought that that was possible. And, and we've shown it once now already. OPC-1 is for acute spinal cord injuries. Is it the same type of uh, injection therapy? Yeah, the approach is very similar, except for we're manufacturing a different kind of cell. Uh, mm-hmm. For that program, we manufacture a cell that's called an oligodendrocyte progenitor cell. Uh, OPC-1 is a nice, easy way of, of uh, just describing that for shorthand. Well, thank you very much. Uh, but, but it's a special kind of spinal cord cell. It's actually, it is the cell that's responsible for providing the electrical insulation. So, of course, um, movement, uh, your arms and legs, your mobility is really nothing more than an electrical impulse between your brain and your muscles. And if you are injured, let's say you uh, have a, a surfing accident or a mountain biking accident and you damage your spinal cord and you become paralyzed, that is because the, the connection, the wiring between your brain and your muscles of your extremities, uh, those cells are lost. So we manufacture those cells and then we inject, inject them into the spinal cord to replace the cells that are missing just like what we do with with the vision problem. We're doing the same thing with spinal cord injury. And we have done that in 25 individuals. Uh, It's been very well tolerated. It's been very uh, safe procedure. It's been durable. The cells have lasted for years. And we've seen a lot of people who have recovered mobility that we believe they would not have received had they not received our treatment. So we want to continue with our clinical testing and move this forward into larger clinical studies. Now, let's talk about lung cancer. We all um, hear about it. We fear it. You have therapies for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. It's broader than that. It's not just lung cancer. It's essentially any kind of cancer, any kind Mm -hmm. of infectious disease. And that's because the third type of cell which we manufacture is called a dendritic cell. And the dendritic cell is a special kind of cell in your body that's responsible for presenting information to your immune system. So your immune system are the warriors. They, you know, they are, they're battling against the invaders, but you have to give them the instruction. You have to give them the message. And whether that message is um, about a coronavirus or about a tumor cell, um, that message is delivered by the dendritic cell. So we can manufacture millions of dendritic cells. We can prepackage them with this information and then inject them into the patient. And now that patient has all of the information that their immune system needed in order to fight whatever that invader is, whether it's an external invader or an internal invader. And all three of these programs, if, even though we're making different cell types, All of these start from these magical, pluripotent cells that have the ability to become any of the other cells. And so it's our manufacturing of these. It's the recipe that we have to be able to make only these cell types. So we don't use stem cells. We never put stem cells into people. Those are just starting material. We actually manufacture the cells that are missing or the cells that are needed by your body. And it's a a really exciting time to have three clinical stage programs, all with the same concept of make the cells that your body needs, put them in the body and let them do their thing. And and that should lead to positive clinical outcomes. Exciting indeed. Brian, where can our listeners learn some more about these therapies at Lineage Cell Therapeutics? Well, we put a lot of information on our website, which is lineagecell.com. And in particular, we have Uh, podcasts and presentations on a media page back there. We have these little IR minutes and we have patient stories where you can hear about a young man who he was paralyzed after an accident. Now he can type 35 words a minute uh, and you can learn about what it's like living with macular degeneration and why it's so important that we're successful in trying to preserve vision for people. Well, it's been a pleasure speaking with you this evening. Hope we'll speak again in the future. I would look forward to it. Thank you so much, Neil. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Brian Cully, CEO of Lineage Cell Therapeutics. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.